Hello and welcome to my retro watches. This is part two of the HY Mosa watch restoration come service come try to fix it video. So hopefully you've watched part one where I've just stripped the movement down and cleaned it. Part two now will be the rebuild, perhaps some refinishing of certain parts. And I think it's gonna be entertaining. Let's put it that way. So cut to the chase, straight to the bench. Let's start the rebuild. Right then, let's uh, get on with the build. Now, I am trying a slightly different tripod setup at the moment, so if the camera shakes in places, it's because I'm either headbutting it or I'm hitting it with my tweezers, one or the other. And also, it's absolutely peeing down with rain outside, and no doubt my microphone is guaranteed to pick that up as well. Uh, so not the ideal conditions to be filming, but hey-ho, uh, I wanna get this watch built. So we're going to start with just a little bit of oil. Again, I haven't got a data sheet for this one, so I'll wing it all the way. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of 9010 on the jaw there. Now I will put the microscope up later on to do the main oil lid, uh, but just for these initial parts, we'll just quickly run through them. So I'll put the center wheel in place, and I'm also going to use some D5 just on the barrel arbor port here. High friction area. But I can drop the barrel in like so, he says. I'm just trying to test it, but it does feel a little bit wrong. Yes, it seems to be a little bit jerky that. I'm not too sure why that would be the case. Maybe it just needs the uh, bridge. I can't see any uh, obvious dirt anywhere. Try and pop it in again. Hmm. Okay, hopefully that's not going to trouble me. So next up is this little bridge. Now I didn't remove this here, I probably I should. I'm not 100% sure what it's there for, other than to hold the jewel in place there, uh, which is just helping with the uh, seconds wheel, or the fourth wheel. Uh, so I'll just put the screws in there, and uh, okay, the bridge is on, and now we'll actually fit the other bridge. It goes over the barrel. Interesting fit on that as well, but there we are. So three screws, one, two, three, and then we're back. So the screws are on and we'll move on and start fitting the train. So I'm gonna get the escape. It's a bit of a dodgy angle for me. Can't really see very well there. There we go, that's, seems to be okay. Third wheel, and then I'm just going to put again a tiny amount of uh, 9010 just on that jaw there. And then I can drop in the fourth wheel. So 
Still not happy with the escape. Okay, we'll try and get the uh, train bridge on, I think, and see if they will locate better. As bridges go, I really do like the shape of this one. And I need somewhere to try and move the jewels, move the wheels, sorry, make sure they're in place. It's very hard to tell. Yes, that seems a bit uh, jammed up. I don't think the escape is in properly. At this point, I normally would use the microscope. It gives a good uh, idea. You can actually see the pivots sitting in the, uh, the wheels. But I think we've got it there. Okay, so we'll put the screws in. Okay, sorry if there's a bit of reflection. It's uh, all that glitters is gold. <laughs> right, so the bridge is on, and perhaps if I just try and move the wheel here, you might just be able to see the escape going. It's all nice and free, so we know they're good. Uh, so it's time really to start putting in. We can put in all the the winding mechanism here, the the ratchet wheel, uh, the click and the um the crown wheel and then we'll turn it over put the keyless works in and we can give it a bit of a wind before we get on to the good stuff which is the balance and the pallet so i'm going to start by fitting the click always a bit of fun uh, but more recently i've been doing it a slightly different way Probably a much more obvious way, really, which is just to try and fit the um, the click itself. Screw that down, and then fit the spring afterwards. If you're regular to my channel, you will have seen me struggle sometimes with these. They go on and on and on. I've decided that this is the better way for me now. And it's been a while, so I'll try and put the long bit in first. There we go. And I've just remembered that I didn't oil the uh, barrel arbor at the top here. Crazy. So some D5 and I really do need to do this on the microscope really. Okay, here's my first mistake. Uh, I've obviously put the click spring, uh, loaded it in the wrong area, because when I wind, I can see the train's gonna work, 
but the click doesn't work at all. So uh, I always make mistakes and I always include them. So I'm gonna have to take this off again and uh, mess about with it. But that's half of the fun, isn't it? Let's face it. Yeah, you can, it is absolutely raining cats and dogs here right now. Um, you can see the spring needs to be on this side of the pin and uh, I put it on the wrong side. Bit of a pain and I'm not sure I can rectify it as it is. So I'll have to remove it, I think, and do it again. And removing seems to be a little bit trickier. There. Okay, now we get the moment of truth. And you can hear it. Obviously my finger's in the way. Let's try and do that where you could see it perhaps. There we go, it's working properly now. So I just need to hold the ratchet wheel with the wood just to get the last turn on to the screw there just to tighten up a bit. But then we can also see now as well that the train is moving nice and freely. Okay, it got to oil the jewels, uh, but we'll come back to that. So now we'll just put on the crown wheel and uh, we can move on. So just a drop of D5 on this post. And the screw, which will be a left-handed screw. Okay, that's that bit done. So let's flip it over, do the keyless. So the first things to uh, fit here, it's gonna be the clutch and the uh, winding pinion. Now, if you remember, I left the setting lever in place for cleaning and um, it's still screwed in. It's just nice and loose, so we should be good. So I just need to grease the wheel or the pinion here. Uh, just looking for my other oiler, but I can't find it. There we are. Now I know that probably doesn't come out very well because I've got a focus lock on and that will be playing havoc. So I'm gonna drop that into its little space. I've just headbutted the camera. <laughs> And then you get the clutch, make sure it's the right way. So these two will interlock. And then I can introduce the stem as well, just to be sure. There 
and it would appear that I probably got to unscrew a little bit more uh, the setting lever there because it's not putting the crown in place as I would like. So I'll just sort that mess out and then we can carry on. Okay, so that is now operational as you can see and I've tightened it up. So we're good to go. And the next part is the yoke. So a lot of these keyless works on these sort of watches. Once you've done a few, you've kind of done them all. They're all the same parts, sometimes a little bit more elaborate. Um, but in the main, they all go together as they should. So here, I just want to try and put a little bit of grease where these parts are going to meet. And that, I don't think, has gone on as well as I'd like, to be honest. But I can come back to that. So we now need to load it up with a spring. In actual fact, what I'll do is I'll just put a smidge of 9010 on this post and drop that wheel in there so we're all set and now we can get the spring and this is a spring that I was not entirely convinced came from this movement originally it could be wrong it just looks a bit homemade to me Now I've got myself in a right pickle. Okay, so. Just can't see where it's actually getting any, any load from at all. Do I need to go back and look at my video? These were always held in with a lot of power and that one just seems to sit there doing absolutely nothing. Um, that's got me a bit perplexed. Okay, uh, I was blind. Uh, I just couldn't see that the springs uh, needs to sit further down. So now I've got it in that position. We should be good. Yep. Yeah. It's going to be good. Now caught itself on the setting lever, of course. Don't you love shepherd springs? <laughs> Shepherd's crook springs, should I say? Right, I don't think you will have seen any of that. I struggled for a bit, uh, but it finally uh, hit home and went in. So I do apologise, sometimes I'm looking at the watch and not actually the camera. Next piece of the puzzle. It's 
set and leave a spring, which clearly doesn't go. What does it go there? It can't go there because it's got to interact with this. Okay, I've just had to go back and look at my footage. And uh, this is the moment where I always say, take lots of photos on movements you've never done because therefore you've got a record. Fortunately, I've got a video record and most of you may have already spotted it. I don't know. I've actually got the yoke in the wrong way round. That needs to, that little bit there needs to be sticking up this way, or at least that's what it was when it came out. So as much as I've just struggled, struggled all that time with that spring, it's now got to come back out again. I've got to correct my mistakes. Ugh, there we go again. Of course, this never does this when I'm not filming. Always absolutely perfect. <laughs> so I often say, you never get frustrated, always laugh it off. You know, the watch will fight and fight and fight. You'll do things wrong, but the aim is to always win. And there we go. I finally won on that one. And what I've actually just noticed that I didn't notice on disassembly, or at least I think, well, definitely 100%, setting lever is broken. Ah, oh, so this should have a long part coming across here to uh, interact with the setting lever. And I can just see the, the remains of it there. And I'll look again on the video to make sure it wasn't there to start with. I don't think it was, to be honest. So that is a bit of a problem. Uh, but we'll soldier on anyway, because there's not much I can do about it right now, other than try and find a part for it if I need to. And I think it was the small screw for this one. Okay, I'll tighten that up and then we'll carry on. Okay, I've gone back through the old video and yes, it is missing. Let's just take the focal lock off. Um, so again, let's just see if I can highlight it to you. It's just here. Where the broken bit is and that should be interacting there which basically helps you or it helps to set so you would change from setting the time to uh, winding the watch you can hear it winding now so that's very very unfortunate uh, that said it might still work fully enough and still see it operating like so so it doesn't seem to hold it out. That's very, very sensitive. It should lock it in place. So maybe all is not lost. Um, I will look for a part, obviously, but for the sake of the video, we'll just uh, carry on. So I don't really want to do much more uh, on this side now. Uh, the main thing is to try and get the balance in and see if the thing is going to run. So here we are, and I've got to put the escape in. The escape. The uh, pallet fork, actually got it hold up foot side down, which doesn't help. Now I have oiled the exit jaw off camera, making a bit of a hash getting it back in as well, which doesn't help. Yes, yeah, so I've just put a little drop of um, uh, 941, I think it is, uh, from memory, on the exit jewel. Now, I do normally, again, show that in videos, uh, but for this one, I'm not. So that's kind of sitting right. And then we've got to try and get the uh, balance cock on. And that's this is really an awkward part, because it's got two bottom pins, if you like, 
got to locate in these two holes uh, and then the dual part's got to line up with the pallet fork and then it's got to be pressed in so you've still got to push it down and that's I'm not happy about that setup but, uh, a lot could go wrong as I can kind of see already and it doesn't help that it's loose in the movement holder as well things aren't going too well here ah, he's just said that and then straight away it's just sat question is is that Is that in the jaw? I don't think it is. Ah, oh, not going too well. So I don't think that the escape pivot is in the jaw because there is some wire, uh, some power in the spring, and the spring would then should be making that move so i'll have to get the microscope and have a quick look and see what we got going on so it's getting rather interesting on the microscope everything is lined up so i'm a bit perplexed as to why it's choosing not to go because the train was working okay before so i'll just put the screw in you never know it might be just something as simple as that and it is Let's just take the lock off again, bring it up a bit so you can see. We can see now the pallet fork is clicking back and forth. That's good. I was hurt, a bit nervous then for a minute thinking, oh, here we go. Another mistake. Uh, so all is well. All i got to do is drop the balance in. It's wanting to go, but not very well. So probably once again is another bit of a screw action. No. Okay, I'm not happy. Let's take it off. I can just feel that the jaw is out of place, the impulse jaw that is. But it's another one of these things that's got three three pins that are going to be pushed into the main plate, and you don't want to do that unless you're 100 percent sure everything's lined up. Or else you break the balance stuff. So as much as it's a beautiful design, it's not the easiest of things because these seem to be quite tough they want a lot of pressure to push them into place and i don't want to give it pressure who would have thought i'd get stuck on a balance that's definitely not right they honestly just don't want to be pushed down certainly no power there is there 
Okay, so we are now on the microscope and about time to really, I should have set this up a lot sooner because you're going to see some of the problems that uh, I've found by not using the scope in this build in the first place. Uh, so first of all, you can quite clearly see there, let's just see if I can get an oiler in, um, the broken uh, setting lever spring. So there should be an arm that comes off that and goes around that pin there. You can also see my poor greasing, excuse me, it's lost its focus a bit. So my greasing was not ideal either. Uh, so there's a, a, a major cock up really. And the next problem, if I can get this thing to focus, is here. So I first of all thought that maybe because I hadn't put those little caps back on, that uh, maybe uh, the pivots were just a little bit out of place and that's why the watch is not running, but no. No, no, it's far worse than that. So if we look at this jewel, and I'm gonna try and zoom in. So again, excuse me while I do that, because sometimes we lose focus. And not sure if you can see that, to be honest. But if we look at these, so look here, we can see the pivot sticking out of the jewel. And then likewise there quite clearly and here we can't and it's actually sitting on a slant it's a shame because when i look for the eyepiece i can see it but the camera's not really picking it up very well um so that means that as much as the train is spinning or it uh, proposes to be spinning when we had it on the other side um i've either broken the pinion uh, which i hope i haven't uh, or it is just literally uh, out of position so I will flip it over and then we do get to see this side of the movement all close up and here we go. So excuse the mess in there because I've got to clean that in a way. So just looking now again. So the escape pivot, I can't tell whether that's in or not to be honest with you now. Could be. Uh, that one's in, but I do suspect it is this this wheel here. Uh, here we go, we're getting flash, camera flash. Um, so one of them sitting in at the top and obviously not underneath. And I do suspect now that the escape isn't sitting right as well. So that is why fitting the balance was a struggle because again, it wasn't going to move, was it? So I'm just trying to try and see if I can rock the balance and see if anything was gonna go. No. Actually, from that angle there, I can definitely see 100% that the uh, escape is definitely not in. Look at that, it's miles out. So um, again, I was rushing, I suppose, trying to do this build. And uh, usually I'm always checking these on the microscope as I go along and I usually take you on the journey with you. So uh, my apologies, I will correct this now and then we'll come back and hopefully I've got it in position. And you may have just heard that. I forgot to take the power down and the power's just shot out. So I'm making mistake after mistake after mistake here. So this is uh, uh, quite alarming, really. Okay, so I'm gonna try and line them up. I'm hoping not really to take the balance and the pallet fork out. I should do really, because that's the best way to do it, but they're such a pain to get back in that I thought I'll just try it this way to start with. Okay, train bridge is back on. The jewels seem to be, or the pivot seem to be sitting in the jewels okay. So the moment the truth is just to put a little bit of wind in and see if the balance is gonna go. So here we go. You may just see my fingers. And we have some life, albeit it doesn't look as uh, happy as I would hope. Uh, I can put some more wind in, but it certainly doesn't look um, like it's got a good amplitude at all. Now that can change. Maybe that will change through uh, some oiling, cleaning the capsules, and obviously putting the other ones back on as well. So I think that's what we're going to do now. I'll just fit the uh, the uh, crown wheel again 
as soon as I took it off to get access to uh, fidget the <laughs> third wheel into position. But at least it's now running and that's half the battle, isn't it? Let's face it. And you've seen yet another one of my mistakes. So perfect. Right. OK, so let's get on with uh, trying to fit those little jewels to start with. OK, let's oil them first. And it's a little bit blurred for me, actually, uh, but it's 9010. I've just noticed there's some strobing going on, so I do apologise for that. Okay, my apologies for the strobing. Uh, it's just a setting on my phone. It drives me mad. Uh, so I've all those three there. The uh, jewel here we'll have to remove and clean and clean the setting as well, which I always do separately. I need to flip the movement over as well. And rather than just film everything, I'll just show you. I've got all these three here as well, and then we just fit the little... Uh, capsules that go over them or dust protectors whatever they are um, put it on the timer grapher and see where we're at so here we are on the uh, time graph i've not oiled and cleaned the uh, shock jewels yet so i couldn't help to have a look and this is the sort of reading we're getting so hopefully my camera can focus on that there we go uh, not too bad, to be honest with you. Pretty healthy. Um, okay, 188. Uh, I can improve that as soon as we oil. And that's why I wanted to show it you, really. We can see the difference between unoiled and dirty uh, shock jewels on the balance and uh, when they're actually clean, so I'll do a comparison. Uh, but the beat error is great and the rate, but well, we can easily change the rate on this one. So uh, really pleased so far. So I'm going to remove those cap jewels and give them a clean. Okay, I've just cleaned and oiled the shock jewels. Sorry, I did that off camera. They're a little bit fiddly, these ones. Uh, so let's put it on the time graph and see if we've improved it any. Show you how we're getting a small, oh, well, there we go, look. Perfect, really. I'm surprised we're not still getting the rates gain, but um, the amplitude has jumped by, what, some 34 places, something like that. 34 degrees so overall really really pleased but it just goes to show especially the balance jewels are really critical to be absolutely spotless and oiled well i just literally put them in some essence of renata which is a, a, a solvent i put them in a little jar well a little basket in a little jar and then ultrasonic them for 10 minutes on a hot wash that's all i've ever done and to see the amplitude has dropped a little bit but it just needs to run it's not even fully wound actually as well so uh that's it now. All I've got to do is build the um, the motion side. So get the uh, hands on, the dial on, and then we can uh, sort of summarize this watch. So here we go for the last little bit. We need to fit the cannon pinion to which I'm just going to put some Mobius D5. I'll just clean my oiler and then 9010, just a tiny bit there for the minutes wheel. Here's the cannon pinion, he says. Goes down with a resounding click, this one. There we go, the minute wheel. 
And we do have the hour wheel, but first of all, we have a little guard plate. That I've just got to remember how this went. I think it was like that, wasn't it? Nope. That's the little guard plate fitted, and I made another mistake because I found out that I got that screw mixed up with that one. So I've had to swap them over as well. Typical. This is how not to uh, do hobbyist watchmaking. We'll put the um, the hour wheel on and the dial washer. I can stick the dial on. I need to turn my attention to the hands a little bit because they're quite rusty. So I'm going to try and show you those now and uh, see if we can or can't improve them. Okay, here's the hands. Not sure how well you can see those. Uh, they are quite pitted and quite rusty. There's not a lot we can do with them really because I can't clean that off. But I bought one of these tools and um, I've shown it on previous videos. This has been a little godsend to me, uh, especially this end here, wherever it is. And it has like a little, I think it's like suede or leather. Uh, end on it and these are really good for cleaning stuff. Versions sell these as dial cleaners and crystal cleaners, things like that. And they're really good. They're very similar to what you can find for anyone that's into photography, but I do believe this end is a lot smaller and possibly a different material. You can get replacement ones as well. Got a link to these on my website if anyone's interested. Uh, really, really good tool and fairly decent uh, value for money as well. So I'm just going to obviously rub back and forth and all it does, it just gets a bit of a shine going, starts to polish them. It's not really going to remove the rust, I don't think. Uh, it's excellent on indices, I have to say. Now I can already see a little bit of difference, perhaps you guys can't. But honestly they are worth buying. Quite difficult with these hands as well because they are bent on the ends to follow the contour of the dial so i have to be a bit careful however okay i'll give them a bit more of a clean off camera and we'll get them fitted Right then, now we are going to do a little bit of uh, polishing and uh, a bit of restoration actually as well. So obviously the movement is all built, the hands are on, I'm sort of okay about how that's working except for the broken setting uh, lever spring. Uh, the case back, so you can see here, it's like someone's tried to have a go at rebrushing it or something and that's gone horribly wrong. So I want to try and correct that. And then the case, the case is fine really, it's just tatty. Uh, it's gold plated, so I'm just going to give that a polish and the crystal is uh, acrylic, but it's got some quite nasty scars in that. So I'll have to sort of sand that down and polish it. But I wanted to, especially to show you, you how I combat this. So I've changed my bench mat to my old trusty green one, uh, which is really dirty. Uh, I've brought in my, uh, I've got a big piece of steel. I've put my version, um, uh, what you call it, crystal press on. I'm going to use that as a straight edge. 
I'm going to get another piece of steel. And this is the steel that I have at work. It's called ground flat stock or gauge plate. Uh, it's flat tool steel. Anyone needs a plate like this and are in England, uh, contact me. I can sell you one, no problem. Overseas, unfortunately, this stuff is really heavy, so uh, postage would be quite expensive, I would think. But it is already available in most countries. So what I'm going to do is get some wet and dry paper. I have got, it's upside down, P600 here. And I'm just going to tear a strip off. It's not so important how it is. And I'm going to wrap it around the ends on both so the plate will actually support itself. And then lay that right up against the steel. So I've got this corner here. Now, with this version uh, 4040 movement holder, I'm able to put the case back in it, uh, pinch it up nice and tight, which it isn't. And then we're just going to turn it upside down and we're going to use this as like a straight edge or a parallel and basically just go back and forth. And you'll sort of already see it's coming back. It will take a bit of doing. There we go, you can see it's coming back on the Scotch Bright now. A bit shinier. There's still a little bit of a dull patch in the middle there, but I'll just work on that a bit more. It's better in the light than it is on the camera, uh, but it's a dramatic improvement, I think you'll agree. Okay, attention to the case. I won't really bore you with this because this is pretty painstaking. For the gold, just going to use some Auto Sol. This is just a metal cleaner that will bring that up without scratching it. Um, I might lightly buff it with a buffing wheel on the polishing machine and the crystal, well it's just a bit of hard work. Acrylic crystals are dead easy. We just need some wet and dry. I've got some 1200 grit and then I'll use some poly watch and possibly uh, some various diamond paces. It's only bad, this is not going to come out in the camera I know, some deep ones here. I can feel them with my nail. So they're going to take a bit of, bit of getting out. All you've got to be careful of, of course, is that don't damage the gold. So hopefully the next shot you'll see is that complete. Here it is, all nice and shiny again and looking quite nice, I have to say. Now we just need to choose a strap for it. And I picked this up recently from a company called Vario. You can find them online. This is really cool. Look at this. <laughs> it's a place to store all of your straps. And I've got a few. I could probably do with another one of these because I've got so many, certainly for my bracelets and stuff. I've actually got some uh, Vario straps as well. Uh, so really, really cool. Good quality stuff. Uh, so I just need to find something to match this. And um, I can even be going with a black sort of, um, but it's a, uh, a lizard print really not real lizard um or well, i've got this this is actually what i got from uh, vario look at this i can't get it out of the pouch this is harris tweed now that actually possibly goes in a funny sort of way i do like that strap i've got to find a watch for it but in my view it's this one I always like gold and brown. And this gold is, I think is almost like rose gold, to be honest with you. So I've got another um, lizard print here. And I think that's the strap we're going to choose, to be honest with you. Nice and classy. So uh, with that in mind, I'll fit the strap and we'll do some nice moody shots for you to enjoy for the end of the video. <laughs>
Right guys, let's sum this video up. My thoughts on the FHF 72 movement. Well, this particular one in its gold color is absolutely stunning. I love a gold movement and this is beautiful. Uh, it's got some very nice aesthetics to it. Certainly the shape of the train bridge. However, that's kind of where it ends because uh, I still can't get over the fact that the um, pallet with the pallet cock and also the balance uh, have those pins as locations. Uh, now, watches do have that, but these seem particularly uh, stiff to push into. And by doing that, of course, you are going to run the risk of breaking a pivot. I'm surprised I didn't, to be honest with you, because it was that much of a fumble in the video when I was doing it that uh, I got away with that quite lightly, I think. I also learned a lesson, and it took about two days after finishing the watch to actually realise that why was the um, escape popping out of its jewel, and actually the third wheel did that as well. And I can only come to the uh, the assumption that I need to fit those sort of cap jewel things uh, first, because there is a lot of movement. There seemed to be a lot of um, movement with the Escape without those fitted. So that must have perhaps something to do with the location of them. And perhaps I was fighting fires because I just took them all off, oiled them, and didn't put them back on. I don't know. Um, if you do know, leave comments down below. So overall, I've quite enjoyed this watch. You know, I have learned a little bit along the way. I've also learned that a watch can operate with a broken setting lever, which is just bizarre. I will try and replace that on this particular watch, but so far I've not actually managed to find the part. So, you know, it has been a learning experience. It's come up very, very nice. Still love the way the crown is actually sort of integrated into the case. That's a nice little feature, isn't it? So like I say, that's gonna be the end of the video. So as always, leave lots of likes, please, because that's gonna help Google's algorithm say that this video is good and it's gonna suggest it to more and more people and I can take more of you down the rabbit hole of watchmaking as many as possible, please. <laughs> uh, also, uh, don't forget to subscribe if you've not already and hit the bell icon because that way you're gonna know when I have uploaded new videos because not all of you have hit the bell icon because the, uh, the analytics actually tell me that. As always, leave comments below. I'll read every single one of them and I'll try to reply to as many as I can. If you want to support the channel, then I've got a tool page on my website. The link is below. They're affiliate links, so it doesn't cost you any more. I get a little small kickback. They're tools that I do recommend. Equally, I've got this rather fetching t-shirt, which a few of you have actually bought. I find it quite funny. It's something I invented myself. So, you know, if you're feeling generous, then you can do that. But of course, you don't have to. YouTube is completely free. And I do this uh, for the pleasure and also to educate some of you guys in, in this video on how not to do hobbyist watchmaking. So there's going to be lots of videos coming along very soon. I've got some more reviews to do on that side of things. So I'm trying to learn a bit more about that. And of course, I've got many more watch repairs as well. So stay tuned for those. Thank you very much for sticking through the two parts of this. And I'll see you guys very soon. Bye for now.